All right, world. So I'm going to start with a little video series on my journey into Ohana, into the island lifestyle. Um, and uh, half a day to all my chamorros out there. You know what I'm talking about. You all know me now. <laughs> You're all family, brothers. So let's go back to um, my first real induction into this whole process. So um, my... third wife is really close friend in high school and she went to high school in a military town so a lot of the people that were in that high school were also kids of the military people that were on the base in uh, Port Wainimi, California and there was a lot of islanders there um, because <laughs> whether you like to believe it or not the water out in uh, the Pacific is cold most of the time and um, it's funny because it kind of runs through some really warm areas all the time and um, but the water is always cold anyways so I got into um, the island lifestyle that way and I kind of was already biased because you know the only Islanders that I ever saw were New York people from the city <laughs> uh, that's a joke um, but a lot of Jamaicans and Puerto Ricans and um, a lot of uh, Cubans and, um, and a lot of Italians and a lot of Irish and a lot of a lot of cultures but not so much the island culture, but but the Asian culture, which I know you all are going to hate me for this, and I'm sorry, but it all came down the same pipeline. So, and I instantly fell in love because I love island living. I love knowing that even if I had to go somewhere fast, for one, I couldn't, and for two, it wouldn't be that far anyways. <laughs> and anybody that's been on the island of Guam, which is a U.S. territory, it's kind of funny, huh? Uh, not a lot of people don't know about them out there, and they've been uh, been helping our asses since the since the beginning of World War II. So, um, yeah, I know. I was part of the Seabees, and um, my first time in Guam was uh, right after my first tour in Iraq, and they took us from Iraq and flew us to Guam in our desert camis, and I was so busy that I didn't really get to enjoy the island as much as I wanted and because all I wanted to do was get home at that point and they kept us there for I think it was three months I'm, it might have been less I don't remember but I'm pretty sure it was like three months and that island is crazy the water is so dangerous there it's out near the deepest trench in the ocean, the Marineris Trench, and the riptides there go all directions, and sometimes they'll take you for miles away, and yeah, the seas get big out there, and it's not a very big island, and these people been around for, <sighs> they were conquered by the Spanish a long long time ago that's where they got their Catholicism and uh, a lot of them are born and raised Catholics but I knew I was never a Catholic um, 
a matter of fact, the only time I had ever been in a Catholic church before I met my my wife really was um, on my um, my father's stepfather's funeral, and we got me and my brother got asked to leave <laughs> in the middle of it because it, it was all very very weird to us. And um, when I met my wife much later and went to a Catholic church with her, but I went to the Guam Club and this is where my story really starts. So uh, a Chamorro guy that I was in the, in the military with, his uh, fiance at the time, also Jamal, and also his fiance knew my wife. Actually, had only met her once, and she said, "I got the perfect guy for you." And I had only met her once, and she told me that she had the perfect girl for me, but. Uh, I'm not sure which one of us met her first, but we all both know that it was only once. And when I finally said, I'm tired of being single and also not having my kids. And I said, okay, give me her number. And uh, I happened to be here in Michigan um, doing a run for the, for the government. And, um, also at the same time visiting my kids who had already moved here and that first day when she said when I told her I said my kids come first no matter what they come first and <clears throat> she said good because my kids come first and she told me how many kids she had, and I was like, oh, shit. Excuse my language, Lord. <clears throat> but the funny thing is, is they were all, I think, oh, man, I even think Ariana was like 11 years old. Oh, she was like 11 years old when I first met her. And um, Andrew was, I, th I don't even think Andrew had been, had, no, Andrew hadn't even gotten in high school yet. Because um, he started high school when um, we moved here to to Michigan. He started his freshman year here. And it, it was not good. If you're thinking sending your kids to a, a school that has a bunch of other rich kids in it because they have better academic scores, don't, don't think your kids are going to do good there because especially when they come from the streets. So tangential to the original story. Um, so, yeah. And uh, we started, like, instantly talking, and she sent me a picture of her, which she even said herself was not her in her best light. And uh, I was hooked. I was like, oh, wow. Oh, this one was older than me, and she looks that good still? <laughs> oh, those island women love their lotion. Oof. But, um, yeah, so... I met her where we now live, and we had our, our, our last son together. We had together, and um, he was born here in Michigan. So this is now home. Sorry, everybody. Um, this is where my kids from my previous wife live, and this is where most of my kids live now, and I wish they all lived here because uh, I miss having them all around. But at the same time, I, I like having a little space to myself. So, um, and that's where I differ when it comes to island people. But I find out that by having so many kids and them all being so stubborn, man, they got that Catholic in them deep. And they take too much on themselves and they love too much 
and they look on people as good first but they watch you with a careful eye and they're uh, they're hard to love as am i so <sighs> But um, once you're in your family, your Ohana, and um, I respect the shit out of that. So, and sorry, Lord. And uh, I just want them all to know that um, this is part one of. me coming into your world and you accepting me um, no matter what so and uh, I appreciate that and I love you all and uh, fuck can you believe it I'm fucking tearing up again but I told you I was a sinner so you know I still take an edible every once in a while but It helps the demons that I can't get out of my head yet. Focus on some more important shit. <laughs> and that's life and love. So here it is. The part one. And uh, I would say the part two is definitely going to have to go to. Meeting the oldest brother and. Um. Becoming best friends with the youngest brother. And of course, marrying the, the little sister. My wife, you know, she's the youngest girl out of them all. So I, uh, I think part two is probably going to have to start with mom. So, and uh, love her to death. She don't scare me at all. She's a big softy, but... Uh, don't get on her bad side, even if you are family. She will let you know about it for the rest of your life, I'm sure. And um, that's good or bad. So She's great peeps. Uh, save that for next time. May God bless us all. One love. One race. Under him. That's the human race for you racists out there. Our lives mattered. His life mattered. You all have a good day now. Talk to you soon.